All right, so this one I get to run a little longer because this is what I get the chance to talk about. I didn't want to go on and on and on with the topic with showing off our technology versus other black services without basically advertising about the wallpaper screen paint. Actually, sorry, wallpaper screen, my bad. The wallpaper uh, projection screen, which is actually available now on the website for 250 bucks. Keep in mind that it's going to end on the 18th or till we run out. We got 50 in the shopping cart or the gamer paint, which is available today. This is the actual gamer paint. First things first, my name is Kenneth Bird. I'm the creator of Illuminous 4K screen paint using ambient light rejection technology gain. I'm in here doing some updating on the website. So we are, as I told you, I think last night that our contract is going to probably be official probably around the end of March. And with that being said, some things are going to be changing on the company. But until then, we're going to be clearing out, I think, some of the inventory, some of the stuff we have stacked up over here. That, uh, and at some other places, I have inventory in other places also too. Uh, so we can get as much of that out the door to get ready for the new transition. And because of that, we we're actually having these special deals. Now, it's up to you if you want to take advantage of special deals. But like I said, it's an amazing screen paint, as you see by my demonstrations. We do things that other people do. So right now, I'm editing on the website where we are going to be doing free shipping everywhere to give people the option to be able to use this technology as a free worldwide shipping. I'm trying to get some cat. Free worldwide shipping. All right, there we go. You just got to put that everywhere on the website. All right now, I'm in here editing my site. I don't think I'm going to need this here. So the object of this demonstration is to show, and we're going to keep pumping this, is to show the difference between our technology. Like I said, some people thought it was black paint. Some people thought they could do the same thing with black vinyl, black plexiglass. I'm like, no, because those surfaces can produce contrast. They can't produce white light. That's the problem you're going to have. So this is what we have here. So you can see for yourself, black paint, black vinyl. That's the black vinyl you get on any form of projection screen. And over here we have black plexiglass. Now, come on real quick. I'll put some abstract art in because right now I'm over here editing the website. Um, the problem you have here is the fact, as I said before, any black surface has the ability to be able to pull off uh, black contrast. That's easy. Any black surface can do it. The problem is it can't pull off white light. Over here. I'm just editing some stuff on the website. I think the wallpaper screens, I got to put them up there for sale right now. So what we're doing right now is we're just basically putting just about everything on sale because like I said, once end of March hits, the contract's fully locked. So we just want to basically sell as much of our stuff as possible well, for a very good price until the date comes up where those contracts actually lock in. Then that's when we actually pass code to the website. But so then we can give you some good deals. All right. So and keep in mind for your company and you think gonna buy bulks of it, they'll deny the order. Um, this is just basically for customers only. So if you come in as a company, we will know, and you're buying tons of this stuff, like you're buying like 13 and 14, oh, no, they'll deny the order. This is for customers only. So we don't want any companies coming in, they can buy a ton of what we have here. And then basically when we basically get to the point where we're actually going to distribute your contract mode, that they'll have a ton of our inventory, no. We'll know if you, we can see exactly. An average customer is gonna order one or two screens. When we start seeing like 20 and 30 orders pop up for one person, we know exactly what's going on there. So your order will be denied. All right, let's go from there because we only have a certain amount of screens in the shopping cart. And we don't need somebody coming in buying 30 of it. All right, so let's see what we got going here. I'm over here editing. So if anyone wanna do it on this side, I am my cord. So I'll twist it up down here. I'm over here editing right now. So, I got this going on right now over here. I got all these cables and wires underneath my feet. All right, so we're just doing a little, let's do the uh, whatchamacallit real quick. Do some scenery. Mm -hmm. 
Look at the tropical olives. Just gives you an idea, you know, decide to, because I had somebody tell me, look, I'm just going to paint the entire wall all black. And I was like, I wouldn't do that if I were you. And eventually, he was very happy with it because he was like showing me all the, 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 the contrast levels. But then when it came to show whiter levels, like, you know, like I said, like blue oceans and white sands and fruits and vegetables, skin tones, stuff like that, the screen came out very, very muddy, very dirty. So that's the part you suffer from. All right, let me see from here. One quart, two quarts. And we'll do some gaming on here too also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, early in the morning, people. Early in the morning. This is usually what time I'd be up. I'm up every day. We'll also do some um, demonstrations on the Supreme 8 wallpaper also. Now, just to add, the two-screen package deal uh, that we had for the Supreme 8 has been discontinued today. The only one we have available is the one, and it comes in at $240. That's at $250 yesterday. I do apologize. It's $240. Mm, let me just say this. Let's see if we can find something else. Let's go with a snow screen saver. There we are, nice big white bright snow screen saver.
I'm just letting that play while I do my first my editing on the website. Done. How many quantities do we have these left? 31. Alright, we'll drop it down to 10. Let's add some color in this because as you can see, it's not pulling up proper black levels. Let's see what we got next. We can try. Let's try the GE snowstorm. Or actually snowboarding. out
All right, I'm done editing mine on the website. So we got everything set up. Um, I guess we're going to keep the prices right there until the contract activates. So let's come out of here real quick. Let's run an app for the time being. Oh, um, I'm so tired. I barely get a chance to sleep, which I should be asleep right now, to tell you the truth. But I want to show you. Um, well, this is an old video. Wow, look how small the screen is. The screen's in 4.3. Let's do this one right here. Oh, my lights. Four, one of the brightest black projection screens, actually, uh, brightest black projection screens on the market. Oops, one just fell off. Pause that. It has to be the middle one. I'm always having a problem with that middle screen in the middle of the black vinyl. Just not one to stay up there. I pressed this thing in pretty good. It still doesn't want to stay. Stick there. There we go. Nice, you made it pretty good. All right, now we just top it over. This gives you an up, like a pretty much heads up. I uh, I'm thought, um, do not paint your screen with black paint. You do it, you'd wreck your system. Everyday black paint, bad idea, very bad idea. Black vinyl, extremely bad idea. And black plexiglass, not good. Any form of black plex on plastic, not good. Now, those of you that are curious to know, far in on this side is black flat house paint. That's what that is right there, so you know. And here in the middle is vinyl. That's black plastic. And the reason why the black vinyl was chosen because I had a few people come into the room channel and say, hey look, I can do the same thing. The back of my projection screen is black. I'll be able to get the same image you can get. That's the back of a black uh, of a projection screen, the black vinyl.
So it's not as easy as it looks. That you can pretty much take a black screen and automatically you're going to get white levels and contrast. It's not that easy. You have to pull white light out of a black surface. And it has to be able to outperform just about any black surface that lays against that screen. Now see how the contrast pulls? When you come to white levels, it turns dark. There's no white light producing from the screen. Only our screens have that ability. Now, for those of you that are thinking about what are the settings in the projector, we've done this one before. I have three videos. I'll put them in the bottom of the description. I need you to check those out. Those videos are made for the naysayers who think that the settings in our projectors are altering the performance of our screen versus other dark screens. We've done this demonstration on three different projectors. I'll post those links at the bottom. You can check them out for yourself. Keep in mind that anytime I do demonstrations like this, I will have backup demonstrations on just about everything. There's the ambient light projection technology that we designed that allows you to use your screen in a fully lit environment if you want to. Option. You have your lights on, your lights off, it's up to you. It's not going to affect your picture quality in any way whatsoever. So. See? Mine is coming off. Yep. Let's go to out in the middle of the meadow.
Let's grab this one real quick. Just grab this one. There we go. Just to show you how fast your bright levels will fail on black screen paint. On any form of black house paint, vinyl, or anything that's not our technology. When I say that our technology has the highest white level, I can show you right here live. I do so many live demonstrations, people kind of forget these are live demonstrations. There's no way for me to fake them. Now while everybody else is doing pre-recorded, or you want to do a pre-recorded video? Unless I'm somewhere where I can't pick up a signal. But other than that, if I'm in an area where I can pick up a signal, I'm going to show you the video live. They can't do live demonstrations because the biggest problem they have is there may be a problem where this screen may fail in that environment. And they don't want you to see it. I have no problem with showing you it. Because I know what our screens are capable of doing. you got to have a lot of confidence in your product to do live demonstrations on this level. Mind is all being shot on a 720p projector. That's it. I think the thing is that people don't appreciate, some people do, majority some people don't appreciate how high the white levels on our black technology is until I actually show other different surfaces that are black. And you can really see how our screens pop when it comes to white levels. Now when I show you this demonstration against a light gray screen, and I show you a demonstration showing white levels and the light gray screen produces a higher white level, you really don't realize how bright the white levels are on that technology when we put it against a black screen. But a white screen or gray screen don't produce color. The screen comes out faded. Other black screens doing different color patterns come out too dark. The image comes out dark and dirty because they're not producing a high enough white level to give them a proper color balance. So it's not as easy as a lot of people think. They think, oh, well, all I got to do is just get some black house paint and I can achieve the same thing. Go right ahead, see what happens. You can't produce white light. So we got a custom chemical that we developed under a trademark secret now that all we have to do is drop that thing into any form of element, any kind of black element, and it'll pull white light. It took years to develop that one particular formula. There's four elements that make up this technology to be able to have it, do, have it perform at this level. So it's not as easy as taking a couple of teaspoons of black paint, some Christmas glitter, and throwing them together and making up some kind of mix. No, these aren't mixes, these are formulas. I love when somebody says, what's your mix? No, it's not a mix, it's called a formula. That's what it's called. It's science behind this. Monkeys in 5K. That's why I can sit up here and show you 
the difference between our technology and other black surfaces. When you got gray screen paints out there, they can't show you the difference between their gray screens and other gray screens. Involving contrast. They can't show you that because you know why? They're all going to react the same way. Each one of them are going to fail when it comes to contrast. Now, if I show you my technology versus other black surfaces, I can show you a huge difference. I can show you a huge difference, a huge difference in our screens versus another black surface, as you're seeing right here. Let me make sure that's up. I got a funny feeling it's going to come down a little bit more. Let me show you something else to give you an even more impressive idea. Let me show you this right here. I can't even see the menu behind this. Okay, so, oops. This demonstration is going to show black and white at the same time. You're going to pick up contrast, you're not going to pick up a white level. Our technology does both.
come out of this. Let's do something more realistic. Let's go with. Let's go with. Uh, I'm going to finish that game today. I can pause. Fortnite has a freaking TV show? Why? Lots of some pairs. That was actually pretty good. So I'm trying to put on everyday stuff that you would watch if you have a projection screen set up in your home. Let me show you what would happen if you use something else. What the outcome would be next to our technology and what is the difference between our technology and every great black services. Yep, and there it is again. I gotta get something to, to better take today so we can get this vinyl to stay up there because it does not want to stay. I had all purpose tape here in the house, but I don't even know what I did with it. I lose it every time. Every time I buy tape, I lose it in the house somewhere. And right after I buy tape, I find it. Wow, man, what did I just do that for? My fault. Oh, man. The past is past. The future is ours. Ah, no, thank you. Nothing can come between us now. <laughs> Oh, no! Okay, come on. Yeah. 
There it is. Looking for a good kids movie with your kids? Or maybe not. Um, this is actually pretty good. Oh. Alright, let's pay out of this one. Let's go with the Thank you, thank you. For light, bright colors, just to show you that black screens have to do more than produce contrast. Let's try something with contrast. Keep in mind, even in the OLED demonstration, just because a black surface is black doesn't mean that it's going to produce black all the time. It has to produce a white level.
happens is by this time your white levels are extremely important when it comes to black screen. It's a must. I done it already. I want to do the LG fish. And we're gonna do some OLED con demonstrations on here because I can show you even with OLED, like I said, it's black contrast, you still have to have a white level in it to be to produce a bright image. So let's go with the LG, I think it's the LG, 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 LG demo. Oh, matter of fact, I'm gonna do this one right here too, also too. House paint, black vinyl, black plexiglass. Everybody says, well, the screen's not black. Let me see if I can get something over top of it without damaging my screen. It is black. So you're looking at a black projection screen with another black surface laying against it, but yet it can produce a higher white level. That's what baffles the crap out of some people. So oh, it's gotta be gray. There's no way in the world black screen's producing that. Yeah. Mm. It's called hard work, that's what it's called. That's what it's called. It's called hard work and research to do it. Same way we can produce an image outside on a 50 lumen projector, it's called hard work and research. This is the reason why we do demonstrations outside, we test our technology outside. That's how our ambient light projection tests are done. That's why I can sit here in a fully lit environment with all this light, and produce an image inside with no problem. Just because I do them demonstrations in here with the lights out doesn't mean the screen can't produce an image in a fully lit environment. I just have options. I can have my lights on and off if I want. to OLED because keep in mind if you paint your screen all black or you use vinyl because like I said I had a customer sit there and tell me that or not a customer but I had someone come into my channel saying well I can just use the black end of my projection screen I get the same reaction no you can't you'll pick up contrast you can't pick up white levels and that means your colors will come out dirty
Not gonna happen. See how bad that is? Screen is literally picking up so much heavy contrast. Like I said, you can't substitute the technology. That screen is literally, these three screens in the center are picking up such a high contrast level, they can't pick up the natural whites that's blended into the horse's body. So I'm going to ask you a question. You got gray screen paints that can't produce contrast that wash out and fade. They produce too much white light. They can't be used in fully lit environments and they do not and cannot be used outside, period. So pretty much that's it right there, bottom line. And then any screen that pretty much that's a dark screen can't produce white light. So you end up with a dirty image that pretty much the only way that's going to be to pull up any kind of proper image is you're just going to be to show straight black without any white levels whatsoever, which is virtually impossible. That just been all black screensaver. Then you have our technology that has the ability to produce both white levels, black levels, can produce image white levels higher than the white screen and produce contrast far more superior than any gray screen on the market. And yet it costs less than a screen that would cost you anywhere from five thousand, four thousand, or even eighteen thousand dollars which are the high-end screens that are actually gunmetal or either dark gray, which would cost you more. So you can go out and spend yourself for the money for an elite screen, a cheap one, a white one, that's going to have poor color, poor contrast, and no form of ambient light or gain whatsoever, and that screen's just going to straight out suck when it comes to all the money that you dropped into your projector. 
So either you're stuck with that, or you can basically jump up to a silver or gray screen by Elite Screens, and then pay somewhere between maybe nine hundred to thirteen to fourteen hundred dollars. But still, that's going to be lacking of contrast, and your screen's still going to suffer in that category with having the ability to produce color, or having the ability to produce contrast, and any form of real ambient light rejection. And then if you decide you want to go up on the top ladder, the top tier, where you have the Dark Star 9, where you have the Valley of the freaking uh, DMP Supernovas, the Infinity Blade, or you have the Black Diamond or the Paxson, now you're talking about a price tag of $4,000, $5,000, and maybe six just for a 100 inch. So you kind of see where our technology fits in there just perfectly. That's why I said, that's why we got contracted so quick. Because the bottom line is, they're going to take this technology and they're going to embed it into just about everything. Now, like I said, March, at the end of March, that is probably pretty much between March, end of March, and in that area of, of, of um, March, April, run right around that time in that area, we are going to be setting the website up for conversion for basically distributorship only. Which means, whatever we're actually doing, any special promotion deals, I tell you right now, take advantage of it because once we're out of the picture, then you're just going to find, figure out somebody who's pretty much took off or we took off, or maybe they had the ability to develop our technology, but it took us 12 years to do it. Or bottom line is you just have to go back to the white gray screen paints because we won't be there in the picture anymore. We'll be up there doing the 40,000 and 100,000 gallons of screen paint, pushing out the different companies. And if they decide to take the technology and do their own screens with it or whatever they're going to do with it and put that into a storefront or sell it, I guarantee you that screen is going to be nowhere near the price that we sell it for. Not even close. I guarantee it's going to be probably about between five and six grand for a hundred inch. Guarantee you. But you think I'm joking. I'm telling you. There's no way in the world. And we've done demonstrations of our screens tested against high performance screens. So if you're an investor and you're looking at a screen that's blowing out a $3,000 screen and it pretty much one gallon of that can coat maybe three or four, maybe five, a hundred inch screens, think how much money you would profit off those screens. There you go. And keep in mind, the screens up there that you pay for, that you may have the ability to pay for, that may cost you four or five grand, those screens aren't ultra short though compatible. You have to buy a special projection screen to be ultra short though compatible. And I guarantee it's going to cost you more than the original screen that would cost you four to five grand. These screens are ultra short though compatible. So whatever this chemical is applied to, it will convert that screen, which means any company can go out and spend a bulk for cheap white projection screens encoded with our technology and that screen automatically jumps up to a three thousand dollar screen because it can outperform a three thousand dollar screen because it can pull images outside and not only that it can work with ultra short throws which a lot of screens can't do all in one so what do you think the price tag with that screen would be let's see if sl screens bought out our technology how much you think they would charge for a screen that had that kind of capability there you go that's why I do the live demonstrations there's no way to fake a live demonstration said at the end of the day I'll be making about 20 30 maybe 50 grand a day on a slow day easily at the end of the day this technology will not be able for you to get your hands on it you won't be to get it let's see what we got with this one right here
And those who had the technology, well, great for you. And I'll tell you why. Because when the website's locked and you can't get access to it anymore, those who have those screens will basically be the only ones that will have those screens. Until, keep in mind, I'm telling people, don't hold your breath on this. I don't know when any of these distributors that are signing contracts with us, I don't know when any of them are going to actually decide to push them into a storefront. You might not even see this tech. This technology can be put designed for installments only. And they do installments only, then there's probably a good chance you might not see this technology for maybe three or four years. Because they'll be doing installments. Now, consider the fact that, like I said, I said this before, if you're a company, you have maybe 30, 40 white screens throughout your entire establishment. And if you go with the company, like not to put the company on any way, like Elite Screens or Black Diamond, you're going to have to throw away all your screens and replace them with the new screens. With this technology, we can recoat all your original screens without you losing any money on you throwing away these perfectly good screens with there's nothing wrong with them. We just have to convert them over to this technology. I've done this with styrofoam. So think how much money you would save. On top of that, you don't have to worry about whether or not if the screen is ultra short though compatible. You could throw any projector you want at it and it's not going to cost you any money to change out your projector. You can run them off 720p as I'm doing right now and they look absolutely fantastic. You don't spend the money for a expensive 4K or 1080p to get the most best picture quality you can. And you can take it outside if you choose to, to do presentations outside or however way you want to do it. You can't take a $5,000 black diamond outside. It's just not going to happen. That freaks me out. That is freaking me out. See, my challenge would be for anybody who has a gray screen paint, do the same thing. Line up all your gray screen paints against other gray screen paints and do contrast demonstrations. And you should be able to see a huge difference. Now, somebody makes a gray screen paint and you can see a massively huge difference as you're seeing here. This is a massively huge difference. You can see the difference between black paint, black vinyl, and black plexiglass. You can see a huge difference when it comes to us showing this paint, white levels. But when it comes to a gray screen, that's the problem you got to ask yourself. What is the difference between multiple colors of gray screens on contrast levels? You'll never see that because they all do the exact same thing. They all fade when it comes to color. They fade when it comes to white level. I mean, not the white level, they fade when it comes to contrast. Whoops, I got one gleaming right now at the screen. Kick the kick Okay. There we go. Sticking in there. Sticking in there. Here we go.
crocodile chilling with the turtles. I don't get that one. Oh shoot, sorry about that. difference what I put on here the color is just going to be it's just not going to be to pick up a white level on any level whatsoever let's go to uh let's go to space here space
Coming off again. Gotta go get that. Missed some of that. Sorry about that. Let's go back. Look at the white levels on our, our screen paint. Versus black paint. There you go. Black paint. Man, the freedom to be able to paint whatever you want to paint. You don't have to have an expensive projector and you just getting a beautiful picture all the way around. You have no idea how much freedom that is. Some of you are out there trying to figure out exactly what proper projector to get to get the best picture quality. I can go to eBay right now, spend $130 for a projector and get a fantastic picture. And use with the lights on. And use ultra short throw. I gotta go through any of that crap. Whether or not my screen is ultra short throw compatible, I have four ultra short throws in the house on four different screens running through my house. I don't have to worry about any of that. Whether or not if I need 720p 4K, I don't got to go through any of that. If I can use my screen outside, I don't gotta go through that. I did a demonstration, I think, when I was doing the inflatable screen. One of the screens literally had water sitting on top of the screen and it froze to the screen. Broke it up right there on camera and just showed you, look, it doesn't crack or peel. I don't have to go through any of that. It's just that freedom to be able to do that. Let me see. Let's go over to a... Oh, here we go. This is something you will never see a gray screen do. Gray screens will do white, so they won't do black. So mm -hmm. if I got to do... If a gray screen has to do an all-black screen saver, I got to do an all-white screen saver versus another black screen. There you go. If I can do it, I don't know why they can't do it. You know why they won't do it? Because they can't show you a difference. That's why. That's why you'll never see a gray screen do other multiple gray screens doing any form of contrast demonstration. They'll never show you because they all do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And let's put this on for a minute. Because this is for anyone that may say, well... The reason why you can do that because your screen is gray. No, my screen's black. It's not gray. So they can't explain that one. How is it possible that you make a black screen produce a white level and it's black? Well, that's what's called a trademark secret. Can't tell you that one. Oh yeah, we got it locked in. We got that's why the nine actually is available. Nines are going to be coming out very soon. Wallpaper nines are going to come out very soon. That's why, because it's locked. Let's see. There we go. Let's go with. Uh, let's see what happens if we. Now we see what happens. We hit white. The screen automatic produces. What would happen if you paint your screen all black with black house paint? How would red pop up? Or if you were to use black vinyl? Now the reason why I have black vinyl up there because I had somebody saying, well, I can just take the back end of my projection screen, which is black, and I can get the same thing. Uh, all right, let's see what happens. There you go. That's what happens. You have to have white light in a screen in order to produce a color. Where if you put a white screen, a gray screen up here, it comes up faded because it doesn't have enough contrast. It's kind of a very interesting balance, if you see what I mean. You have to have the perfect whites 
and the perfect blacks to be to pull that off. But this is what happens if you were to go paint your screen with black house paint. Hmm, let's see, will this color change? Maybe a blue. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Now it's not going to change it to blue. Mm -hmm. I'm just want to go with lighter colors. That's not going to go too well. So that's the part that baffles with most people. How is your screen black and how is it producing a brighter color than another black screen? It's because it can produce white light. Mm -hmm. Because some people think if I make a black screen paint, it's just got to be to produce a contrast level. No, 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 no. It's not that easy. It has to be to produce white light. If it can't, the image comes out dirty. Even if using gray. Mm -hmm. Let's go with, uh, let's come out here, clear. And let's bring up, um, do, 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 do. I like doing the LG food. We're going to do the sky work real quick. We've done this about a million times, but I do love doing this demonstration. I see how I pull contrast with black levels. The only problem is, you can't pull white levels. If you can't pull white level, that means your image comes out dirty. With or without, even lights on, it's not going to make a difference. You can't pull it. It's more than just taking two forms of paint and mixing it. That's, bull, that's, that's garbage. How you make true technology involves elements. It doesn't involve mixing this paint. And, and no, it doesn't. That's why we don't call it a mix. We call it a formula because there's science behind it. A mix is just a bunch of paints mixed together to make some goofy mess. Because they can't back up anything what it does. Now, when we first started off, people were saying, okay, I think it's just regular house paint. That's just house paint. That's all it is. Yeah, okay. There you go. There's your house paint right there. Maybe it's black. I can do the same thing with black vinyl. Huh? There you go. There's black vinyl. Maybe with black plexiglass. There you go. Black film. You want me to buy black film? I can do black film if you want. And it's just showing you that it doesn't make a difference. Even if you have a black screen, it has to pull a white level. If it can't pull a white level... That means the image is going to come out dirty. It's going to pull contrast to color. Same thing if you're dealing with a um, a gray screen. Gray screens have to be able to pull contrast. They have to. They don't pull contrast. The color fades on. They wash out. That's why if you take a white screen and you stick it in a full lit environment, it washes out. There's no contrast on the screen. I don't care how high the gain is on that screen. If it doesn't have contrast in it, it's going to wash out and fade. We've done this already before in demonstrations against high-end screens and cheap gray screen paint mixes. If somebody tells you, hey, my gray screen doesn't have ambient light rejection, doesn't make a difference if it has ambient light rejection technology or not. If, you do not, if your screen's not contrast, you can't pull black level, you can't pull proper color. Your screen washes out and fades. That's why you have to calibrate. I've never had to calibrate a black screen. Never. And you watch me do unboxings where I take a projector right out of the box, boom, on the screen, done. I don't have to calibrate any of my projectors for what? It's black. I don't have to worry about whether or not my projector has a 10,000 to 1 or 20,000 to 1 contrast. It's black. It's a black screen. It's going to pull it regardless. I can take a cheap 200 to 1 contrast, 200 to 1, 100 to 1 contrast, 50 to 1 contrast, no contrast. It's going to pull. It's a black screen. But you would have this problem on a gray screen because a gray screen 
does not have the ability to pull contrast. A white level, yes, they can pull a very high white level. I've showed you that before. But we go to blues, greens, and reds, and yellows, it doesn't pull. It just shows a bland image, even in the dark. And the sad thing about it is, a lot of you have very good projectors, and you're probably watching a gray screen, and with the lights out in the dark in your dedicated theater room, and you're swearing up and down that you're actually seeing a black image. You're not seeing black. You're seeing shades of gray. You're not even seeing anywhere of what your projector has the capability of doing. If I can make a 720p look this good on our screen, and you have a 1080p or 4K on a gray screen, you're not even close to anywhere what my 720p can do output. It can easily outperform your projector because it's a black screen is being displayed on. Think about it. If you have 20,000 to 1 on your projector, and I have 200, 200 to 1 on, an, on, a, on a projector here, I can pull a higher contrast on my screen than you could pull on your gray screen at 20,000 to 1 easily. And it just shows you. And trust me, when we talk about when we go ambient light rejection technology, you couldn't take that screen outside if you want to. It would fade just like that outside. It doesn't have the ability to pull. It doesn't have the ability to pull even in a fully lit environment. It can't pull. That's why when I see demonstrations where somebody's showing any form of background that involves like OLED, that involves dark contrast, these demonstrations have to be done in dark environments because it's the only way the screen's going to be able to pull up a decent black level. But technically, you're not seeing black. You're actually seeing shades of gray. That's what you're seeing. Oh, there's my screen falling up right now. So that's what you're actually seeing. You know, one of the things I did to get one of the one of the contracts that I, I got two contracts going on right now. You know how I achieved the second contract? Because we went to their facility. And we paint, we bought our own screen and we bought a Supreme 8 in coated with that technology. We did a white snowstorm. I grabbed a bucket of black paint and I went down the side of my screen with it. And they watched that black paint turn that image dirty. While our image maintained a bright, beautiful white image. And that's what got us a contract. Because I could show them the difference between my black screen and black house paint. testimonies from churches that use our technology. Just because it's black doesn't mean it doesn't have to produce white light. Regardless, it has to. Not the image comes up there. Now it's produced higher white levels. Higher white levels and brighter colors. And nines are in black. They're weird looking. They're kind of like a goldish color. produce brighter, more vivid colors and higher white levels. How would an 8 do anything better than a 9 when a 9 is a more advanced screen? That's like saying Atari 2600 it's actually better than a Jaguar. And Jaguar has a higher system because it has a 64 bit system in it. And Atari doesn't. Eights, bottom line, are basically, nines are actually better than eights. 
But if you look at an 8, an 8 is more superior than any screen you've seen on the market. Name one screen that can do what an 8 can do. There isn't any. And in fact, an 8 can sit outside on 1100 lumens outside in daytime hours and produce an image. That's, no other screen can do that. So even if 8 becomes one of our low-end screen paints, it is still far more superior than any screen out there at, on a low end. Consider that one right there. Nines have interesting technology capabilities. They have the ability to be able to produce, all our screens produce black levels. It doesn't make a difference. They all have that ability to produce black levels. Black levels is nothing when it comes to a black screen. As I said before, any screen is going to produce black level. The hardest thing for a black screen to do is produce a white level. That's what, this is what the demonstration is about. Like I said, you could take black vinyl, black material, black paint, whatever. It's going to produce contrast. Same thing if you take a gray screen and you put it up against color, it's going to produce a higher white level. Only problem is gray screens can't produce contrast. And not every black screen is going to be to produce a high enough white level. That's why I have the different shades of black up here to show you the difference between our black technology versus other black screens or surfaces and using white levels and using so you can see the difference between how high the white levels is on our black technology. Now the problem I have with gray screens is I don't see any demonstrations on other gray screens doing black and doing any form of contrast. And not in the dark, I'm in well lit environments. That screen should be the form the lights on, with no problem. That's why I said, do you see me doing demonstrations? I have two people rarely see me do demonstrations with lights off. But I can turn my lights on, I can watch my screen if I choose to. This technology has that ability to do that. real quick the gamer paint now to mind this is gamer paint that I have on my wall the gamer paint that we had has nine technology embedded in it nines can produce amazing color capability I mean they make 720p's look incredible as we were advertising when I did it I did a demonstration where I had a Casio 720p projector XGA uh, the projector was um, sitting in eco mode um, level one and the setting for the brightness on the projector was 16, the contrast was minus 1. And the video description, I put down it was a 1080p projector. Anyone who came in that room thought it was 1080p. It wasn't. It was a 720p projector the entire time. That's what, it, that's what Deluxes can do. It had the Deluxe Supreme 8 Deluxe, that gamer paint, has 9 technology embedded in it. 9s produce have an interesting color code to it. They don't look black. That screen is far from black. The golds are even different. The golds don't look anything like anything else. They don't like blacks or grays or anything. They look serious. It's, a, it's almost like a near gold screen. But they have the ability to produce amazing color capability. The colors on the screens actually are incredible. Soon, as I get some time, I, I, I might do one for myself. I might do a gold screen. I got to figure out where to put it at because I'm running out of room. Seriously. <laughs> using all kinds of but this is just to show you that you know if you get the idea to want to
paint your screen all black with house paint, what's going to happen to your screen? Or one guy, like I said, he said he's just going to go down and get a huge sheet of black vinyl or black plexiglass just to show you what's going to happen. And the difference between our technology and these screens. The black screen has to do more to produce contrast. It has to produce a white level. That's what makes the color pop. Brings it to life. You want natural skin tones. You want pure white levels. You want your picture to look realistic, not dark and dirty. And mind you, this is on a 720p projector the entire time. So 4K or 1080p's up here. These are all 720p. This is a $139 used projector that I got off eBay. So you have options. You want to use your lights on? Turn your lights on. Don't worry about your picture fading and washing out. You can take this technology and you can paint it on anything you want. Upgrade your pre-existing projection screen, paint it to your wall, whatever you want. My projector that sits here is 3,500 lumens and it is 10,000 to 1 contrast. But I'm going to show you something here. Because that's the first thing people ask me about how many lumens I have on my projector. Let me show you something that you can check out for yourself. It's a bit of a challenge. It's been going around for a while. I think for about maybe about um, three years. It's called the 1100 lumen challenge. It's a challenge that we put out there for any screen paint to match it. This was a seven, mind you, at the time. This is how much light one of our technology takes in. With that cinema block. Let me remove this off real quick, and I'll show you what you're looking at here. So, this projector we're using outside is a Sony projector that I own. He's still here in the house. It's a Sony VPL. It's a Tony VPL um, uh, uh, X1000. That projector is only 1,100 lumens. That's it. I think the black screen paint you have next. Now, this is how we test our screens. We don't do ambient light projections inside. They're done outside. The screen has to be able to produce an image outside at 10 to 12 feet back on 1,100 lumens. So if I can produce an image outside on 1,100 lumens, what do you think inside the house would be like? There is more ambient light outside on a cloudy day than there is in your entire house. I want to get my neighbor's license plate. That's how we test our technology. We don't do poorly lit environments, a little bit of ambient light in the background, say, ooh, it's ambient light rejection. It's not an ambient light rejection test. I guarantee you when Elite Screens or DMP Supernova or Black Diamond, one of those companies, I guarantee you when they're doing ambient light rejection demonstrations, they got a little bit of light in the environment and they're probably using a projector of maybe, I don't know, maybe four or 5,000 lumens at the most. That is a 720p projector sitting outside at 1100 lumens at 12 feet back. You see how much ambient light is bouncing in that environment? There's no, there's no walls, no windows. There's no ambient light controlled environment out there. Your screen has two choices. Either it shows or it fades. This is why cheap screen paint mixes are a waste of money. That's why it doesn't make a difference if I have a 3500 lumen projector or if I have a 43, because I can show you demonstrations of me testing out our screen paint outside on projectors that are literally pieces of crap. As a matter of fact, now if our screen even to go so farther dark. than that, I'll show you something called 50 lumen test. And this is on a silver screen. These screens weren't even black. This is on silver technology we used to develop. We don't do it anymore, but.
There you go, right there. 50 limited demonstration. Mm -hmm. I told somebody, if you can see any company doing the same demonstration, I give you free screen paint for a year. Fantastic. I didn't think the screen would pick up this clear. Like I said, 50 lumens. Look at this on 50 lumens. That's five feet back. There's a projector right there. So that's a 50 lumen okay. pocket projector, five so feet back, see. pulling here. up an image outside in the Please afternoon start. hours. So just so nobody complains about the screen being under a porch, I took it off the porch so that way the ambient light can hit directly on top of the screen. And that's silver technology we're developing. There's a little pocket projector. There you go. So now having taken off the porches, usually when you have a porch over top of you, you will lose some of the ambient light. I mean, of course, there's ambient light all around you, but you'll lose some of the direct ambient light that should be coming right down on top of the screen because of... That's how we test. That's how we do our demonstrations right here. This is a 50 lumen projector inside the house. That's inside. Now, if that now, can the pull... Why there's no furniture... That can pull an image right now outside, inside, is a kick bring it upstairs to 180 inch screen. Now, I'm not going to hang out. The screen is huge. It I'll show you right here. Same little black projector. Mini projector. I am seeing from my screen, this is actually the luminous uh, high octane dark silver, I'm sorry, deep silver. Now keep in mind, I wouldn't advise you using a 50 lumen projector if I'm mean, using it for something where the projector to me a little closer up. But this is what our screens can pick up. Now I know now, first like I thing, said, when people see us doing demonstrations, the, the first thing they say is, oh, he's got to be using a very high power projector because that's the only way that image can pull up in a fully lit environment. Now I can go back and show you demonstrations of pulling up images at 50 lumens outside, demonstrations on 1100 lumens, demonstrations of my projector sitting back over 25 feet, 21 feet, demonstrations of us freezing screens. Yeah, we've, done, we've actually froze the screen and pulled it apart on camera to show you that the paint doesn't crack or peel. Because that demonstration was done because one of the formulas we developed had the ability to bleed into a surface. Now, the reason why it was designed to bleed into a surface because if you're painting a motorized projection screen, you wouldn't leave a layer on top of it that may jam up your motor. So the formula was designed to bleed into the surface, which means it didn't make it virtually impossible for it to rip or tear, especially in outside cold elements. We've done all this stuff already. I know some people would try to debunk a lot of stuff that I do because they say, oh, it's virtually impossible. That's why we do our demonstrations live. No way to fake a live demonstration. But no one's doing demonstrations on these levels. And I had downstairs, which I don't understand. Because I guess the, was, the Brookstone was an older model. This is a newer model. Oh, no, 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 no. You're not I'm offending me, my man. You're not offending me in any way whatsoever. Never feel, never feel I'm offending you. Uh, you're not offending me at all. It, it, basically, we have, when you go to our website, um, we have a dis description of all the stuff we have on there. But you're not, you're not offended, you're not offended me anyway. We just, I have to have all these demonstrations regardless. I have to back up everything that I do. That's why I have so many demonstrations. And then on some of the stuff is just crazy stuff that just pops in my head in the middle of the day thinking, hmm, I wonder if I can actually get away with this. Because there was a demonstration which I was really curious what would happen if I mounted the projection screen on the ground and we shot the image from off the deck. Which I'm thinking like, okay, usually most people when they do demonstrations, the projector's sitting this way. But what would happen if I put the projection, uh, projector here and shot the image down there? Would I still be able to pick up an image? So this is just crazy stuff that bounces in my head to see exactly what I can do to make the image fail. I'm not, when I do demonstrations like this, it's not to see whether or not, it may be happy if it's successful and it works, yeah. But it's just to see exactly how far I can push the envelope to get the screen to fade. But no, 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 no. You, you, you've done nothing wrong. Uh, bottom line is, see, look at this. Ha you see this right here? This is what I'm talking about. Anything now passes for daylight projection screens. <clears throat> Do you see this? This is the stuff that pisses me off. How 
is that considered to be a daylight screen? See, they consider that to be a daylight screen because you can actually make out the image. There's no image there. What are you talking about? And it's the worst thing I've ever seen. Oh, great goodness, man. I swear I need a freaking giant rolled up piece of newspaper and a freaking spray bottle. This is what ticks me off. Look at this. They consider this. This is what's considered now to be considered ambient light rejection. You can't even see the image. This is why the fellow, all right, I'm going to just tell you right up front, real quick, since the contract's already done it all. The fellow who basically, that basically contacted me is from Projector Central. All right, so now you know. So basically the discussion that we had, there was the fact that screens now today, anything is considered to be ambient light rejection. And it's, it's not, man, it's not. That's not ambient light rejection. Look at that. You can't even see the image. How the freak is that considered to be freaking ambient light projection? 2400 lumens projection screen, daylight projection screen. Oh, man, I tell you. I tell you. This is what frustrates me. It doesn't frustrate me. It's the fact that that's passable as a an ambient light rejection outdoor screen. I mean, ain't not outdoor, but ambient light rejection. That's passable. I, I don't get it. I really don't get it. Hold on for a minute. Okay, how are we doing out there today? First things first, these are seven. Early quarter of luminous 4K screen paint using ambulant rejection technology, chain times four and five. And they see how much light a seven has in it, but this one right here, I mean. Okay, we're outside with 1100 lumens. That's 1100 lumens outside. We're about 10 feet back from the screen. At 10 feet, this is 1100 lumens. At around 7 o'clock. That's how an ambient light projection screen is supposed to react. So if you notice, like I said, outside, there's no walls, there's no roof, nothing protecting the screen. His projector was 2400 lumens. My projector I'm using is 1100 lumens at 10 feet back. And I can pull up an image where it's not faded and not washed out. Not only that, I can pull a contrast lamp, um, image. Actually, not true. Um, even if you have a short throw projector, I got short throw and I got ultra short throw in the house. And even if you have an ultra short throw projector, they don't show up on gray screens all too well. They really don't. Because they can't pull contrast level. Like my projector I have in the other room is an Optima GT56. It has a 20,000 to 1 contrast. And you're just not going to be able to pull that up properly on a gray screen. If I go to my... Let me see. Just pull up on anyone. Let me just pull my crystal wedge from the bottom. I'm in the back here with the inflatable screen. Oh, yeah. It's quite nice. That's Enough the inflatable screen right here. there. You got to see this. That's why I showed you one of the screens I actually left it outside and it got encased in ice. There it is right there. Look, that's one of the screens right there. And for the motorized projection screen already stripped down. 
Get ready for the new screen. Right here is a canvas screen that's been sitting out here forever. And we see we got a layer of ice on it already. So that's one of our screens sitting outside in the ice. I'm sorry, out in the, in the cold. The ice on this already. These screens are waterproof. So you can see this is my formula outside with a huge sheet of ice on it. How strong our screen can be. No crack, crack, don't crack or peel. Peeling. I can sit them out there. The screens don't the freeze out there. They don't crack or peel. This has been sitting out here. Because the design, you see the back of the screen? Cracks. See the back of the screen? Why can't I pull it up? The ice on this already. These screens are weatherproof. So that formula is designed to bleed to the screen. Outside with a huge sheet of ice on it. It's designed to bleed to the screen. So when it bleeds to the screen, it actually intertwines itself into the surface, which means it makes it impossible for the crack or peel because it actually becomes a part of the surface that it actually painted on. Instead of leaving an outside layer on it, that basically that moisture can get up underneath of it and cause it to crack or peel through heat or through maybe um, too much cold. It's designed to intertwine and bleed into the surface. That's the inflatable screens. They won't be out until the summer. Gamer screen, gamer screen, gamer screen, gamer screen, gamer screen. There it is. That's the ultra short though right there. That's the one in the room right there right now. That's a black. It's wallpaper. Ooh. That's the ultra short though. I got two of those in here somewhere. Gaming screens got better color pop. They got nine in bit. They got nine technology embedded in them. So they have a higher color pop. Contrast, better white levels. Same thing with nines. The nines just basically have a better um, color pop. It was designed for gaming. We did a bunch of demonstrations on showing up on a 720p projector. I didn't even have to break open the, um, the um, 1080p because I own two son I to own sorry I own two uh, Sony's BPL FH30 they three thousand dollar projectors I own two of them and those projectors right there man you hit that thing with anything and it causes the screen to blow up but with this I can use a basic 720p projector with the brightness level at 16 and contrast at minus one in eco mode at 2500 lumens and I can do it at 10 feet back in a fully lit environment and that screen will pull up images that would just pop up off the screen you couldn't tell the difference between that screen and a 1080p and I did the demonstration already on that one. Now eights have that ability. I'll tell you what's more powerful than eights. Let me see. We can figure out where it's at on here. Can't do this. The damage plan. That's my ultra short through Sony. We're going to take half of that one and the other half with that nine. We're going to do a demonstration outside at four o'clock in the evening. I'm going to show you why white projection screens, gray screens are the worst way to go. That's being projected on the floor. The contrast. They have to be in the dark. Now this is my screen with the lights out. That's the frame first started working on. That's the wallpaper right there. That's a Supreme 8 wallpaper screen right there. That's another one right there. That's a gaming screen we did on the floor. Check this out. That's a Supreme 8 wallpaper screen laying on the floor.
And the Archer shirt, though, is sitting over on the bookcase. Wallpapers can be set anywhere. On the floor, on the ceiling, they have a 190 degree viewing angle. They can pick up anywhere in the environment. You know, got screens that can do that. Uh, this was 21 feet back, 1,000 lumens, 25 feet back, 1,000 distance at 25 feet. These are nines. Okay, how are we doing out there today? First things first. Let's pass up real quick. Oh, actually, the screen that apparently looks to be black. All right. Look at that real carefully. Now we're going to come over here and we're going to grab some gray screen paint. I'll lay this against it. So you can see the different multiple shades. Now, looking at the screen, you would think it was black, but as we said before, the screen has a very interesting color code to it. It's literally they're black. not black. It's black, but it's they're not weird black. looking. All right, so let's remove all this off here. Let's come over here. Let's take the screen and let's lay it against our larger screen, which is our um, our uh, Supreme, Supreme Eight. Eight. Now we we'll step back, and as you see, the screen has a very Odd, strange color to it. All right, so we're going to take now the gray because maybe some people looking at this may think it may be gray. We'll take a very dark, dark gray and put it against the screen. Now you see it now. They're not black and they're not gray. They're almost like a goldish color. And then we'll take another shade of gray and place that there. This is the color, the technology. You won't see it until you actually lay something against it. This is how they Where's react. A ton of ambient light. Let's go to the side to show you the screen. Can pull up an amazing angle gain, even though it has a very interesting. It turns dark when you turn to the sides. And that's on styrofoam. That was coated on styrofoam. Designed to change color. Now that's not the gold. The golds are crazy looking. Let me show what the golds look like. I can come back and find one of the gold screens we're messing around with. The golds ain't gonna be out for a while. The golds are gonna be designed for. We're gonna be designing those for strictly for gaming. A little bit of gaming screens with those. The vintage build. Is that the vintage build? Yes, yeah, the vintage build. I got a, a screen I'm actually building this week. I'm building a vintage projection screen. Old fashioned. This is a gaming gold. Okay, down in the basement. Sorry about that. I had to cut that video really, really short. That's a very important business call that had to be taken. Uh, this is the gold gaming screen we're using to actually for applications for our gaming gold projection screen. They're gold. That's They're a bit much right there to say. So looking at this, um, this screen, if you looked at it basically by itself without the black. Let me see if we got the big one down here too. So as you can see, it's not great. That's the big one. Let me see if you can find the great big one. We got a bigger one than that it's one. It's not black. Actually, a very interesting color, and we're going to be using these for our gaming gold screens. Now, the reason why we haven't been on in a while, just getting this set up real quick. And it's going to take up all of this, it's going to be massive because yeah, I was doing some Borderlands on here and I was having a freaking ball. The colors on a screen that has this kind of odd color to it. It pops, man, on a level that's unbelievable. We're just on 720 feet. Projection room as a designer on projector. Woo, man. That's expensive, man. That's serious money. That is serious money, man. I would love to have the design my own projector. That'd be kind of cool.
Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm about to take design and project. Like, good grade, how much money it costs to build a projector? Oh, man, I thought, yeah, I'm going to build a projector. Like, how much money it costs to build a projector? Like, man, it costs millions of dollars to build one. I'm telling you, man, it is it is the best way to go with projection, man. I'll tell you why. Because at first, people had a lot of gripe about projectors because, number one, they didn't want to be uh, stuck in the dark all the time. But now, you know, with new technology changing, you don't have to be stuck in the dark. You know what I mean? Uh, you don't have to have uh, all the calibrating your projector and all the bull crap nonsense that goes with You don't have to go through any of that. I have projectors throughout my entire house. I had somebody once tell me that I'm an idiot because I have screens throughout my entire house. Wouldn't you if you developed this technology? Heck yes. Especially in the summertime. Oh my goodness, the screens I'm building out back. I already had the 180 inch out back already, but now I'm going to upgrade to a 200 inch 235.1 wide screen out in the backyard. I can't wait for that. I cannot wait for that. This is the styrofoam screen. Now that's the gold screen on styrofoam. Yes, I'm loving this. This is actually fantastic. 10%? Not bad. Real quick, i show you how the back of the screen was made. The back this of the screen is made out of... Each is a square. So square is a styrofoam. Each squares together to make the styrofoam. So I had to get one, two, three, four, five, six square pieces and tape them all together. So that is six pieces of styrofoam squares all taped together using duct tape. But you wouldn't notice it if you looked at it. You'd think it would all, it's all one screen. It has. It's, it's just a whole different design of, of screens. Yep, that's what did I do? What did I do? Hold on, because it causes the color to pop even higher than a black screen. All right, so you gotta excuse my junky bedroom, but I get a chance to clean it yet. Gold, baby, gold. Let me show you something. So. This is the screen and our bedroom. Now, instead of me going out, this is a 60 inch. We just measured it yesterday. It's around 60 inches. Instead of me going out and spending the money for a TV, and this is a firewall on this side right here. Now, keep in mind, I can't punch the wall normally like any other wall because it's firewall. It's a brick wall on the other end. I would have to get something called a masonry drill or a hammer drill to punch through the wall. So, I would have to put brackets in. And then I would have to take the screen picture TV and mount it to the um, to the um, to the, uh, the, um, the mount. So that means it's probably going to stick out about this far out from here, right? We're not that far, but I'm, you know, I'm talking about from that far. So instead of going through all that crap, I got my Optima GT5600 Ultra Short Throw Projector, stuck it up against the wall, taped it out, painted it in, done. That's it. So instead of me going out and spending all this money for a TV. And something that, keep in mind, if I had kids, would run the risk of basically them cracking or damaging my screen. Because kids got to have it throwing stuff all over the house. I don't know how people do it when they have like a 90-inch LG, LG TV in their living room and they got a bunch of kids. I don't know how you do it, man, because that would freak me out, man. Because kids got a bad habit of, of jacking. Don't get me wrong, I love kids and all, but they do got a habit of jacking stuff up pretty fast. So I don't know how you do it. So if one of my nieces and nephews came over and they threw something, it just bounced off the screen and that's it. I mean, the biggest concern I would have is I'm dragging down the projector, but you can't do that with ultra short throw. The majority of most people who have ultra short throws, they want something as close to a TV as possible. They don't want the projector sitting behind them. They don't want to run a bunch of cables. They don't want short throw. They want ultra short throw. They want something that's going to react like a TV. And this is what you get from our technology. Instead of going in and mount, spending all this money for an expensive TV, this projector right here, when I first bought it, cost me $1,100, right? Now they're like eight and nine on Amazon. Let me sit in here. Let me sit just like 
light, so this light's probably off too. All right, so here in a fully lit environment, look at my screen. It makes sure it doesn't fade, doesn't wash out to go through any of that nonsense. Instead of me going to spend all this money to get a TV and lug it all the way up the stairs and punch a hole through my freaking, um, um, my firewall, mound up a bracket system, then I got to have two people help me pick up the screen and the, uh, the TV and attach it to the wall. No, that's it. Just paint the wall, just paint the screen in, throw my projector in, I'm done. There's no calibrating, turn it on, I'm done. That's it. But some people just don't want to be bothered with projection screens. So the first thing they say is, well, you know what I mean? The picture's going to fade out. That quality's going to look crappy. It's going to be this, that, and the other. Well, if you had our technology, you wouldn't have that problem. You could do this with no problem at all whatsoever. And if I want to go bigger, guess what? It's not going to cost me any more money. So if I want to upgrade our screen to maybe an 80-inch or a 100-inch, it's not going to cost me money. Try to go out and get yourself a 100-inch uh, um, um, black OLED screen and see what happens. Bigger screen you go, the more money it's going to cost you. I may play. I swear, I had a weird day yesterday. Yesterday, I heard a swore it was freaking Monday. I thought it was Monday yesterday. I'm really confused right now. I worked too many hours. I was just here, I know that. That's why I said I don't I don't get that when it says ambient light rejection screens. I don't get that part. I don't know how that's a daytime screen. Ambient light rejection. Rejection. Um, let's see. Projection screens. Let's see what we dig up. Now, this right here is supposed to be ambient light projection. Hi, this is Lumatrix. An outdoor projector with a built-in media server, camera. All right. I'm Hi guys, Nexi here, back with another video, and today I want to show you something really cool. In this three meters long box, there is a 120-inch pop-up electric projector screen. I don't like playing people's voices at all. Period. This is supposed to be ambient light projection. That's not ambient light rejection. That's ambient light controlled and controls. I like the pop up. That's beautiful. It's pop up screen is gorgeous, but no, that's not ambient light rejection. So they figure because they got the windows open here and here and here, it's considered to be ambient light rejection. That's not ambient light rejection. And then you're using ultra short though at that. So no. Uh, let me see. This is another one I found really funny. So this is Elite Screens booth and the showroom, which I found was kind of funny because it's dark in there. Okay, so if you go all the way back to the very beginning, the hallway literally had more light than the booth that they were sitting in. And this is what I found kind of interesting about their booth. So every last screen is sitting next to a window. There's no window light in the environment. And the spring right here is blocking out any window light from the back. Look at the projector right there. Guarantee that's 4K and it's probably about 5,000 lumens. They have one light here in the corner. And if you notice, like I said, the screen is sitting directly behind. The, um, it's blocking that window light. The light's pushing out from the window and it's hitting there.
So why is your screen sitting there blocking out window light? Alright, so. Now they're showing you this is how black screens are supposed to react. Look how dark the floor is, look how dark the corner of the walls are. That's $899 for that screen. Wallpapers are 250 and they produce images outside. So, let me show you this real quick. If you look at any of the screens in the environment, there's very little light in the environment. Light sitting behind the back of the screen, right over there in that corner. Look at the overhead lights, look how dim they are. All the lights are sitting behind the back of the screen, if you notice. They give off the illusion that there's light in the environment. There isn't. The light is sitting behind the back of the screen. And this is stuff I can pick up on. So now they put the light over top of it to show you. The screen can take in tons of ambient light, but yet your main lights are sitting behind the back of your screen. It's not much of a difference, I'll tell you the truth, look at it. It really isn't much of a difference. And keep in mind that doing the demonstration, as I told you, when they do their demonstrations, they always do it against a white screen. You don't need ambient light to make a white screen fade. You can take any kind of screen that has a little bit of color that's a little bit more, like if you take bare silver screen and you test it against a white screen, the bare silver screen is going to come out a lot better because the bare silver screen is going to be a little bit darker gray and it's going to be to produce a little bit contrast, a better contrast over than a white screen. White screens don't have any contrast. They have no black level. It's the white neutral screen. So if you have any screen that has slightly just a little bit more contrast than a white screen, it's always going to produce a much uh, um, um, better color. Not by much, but it's going to produce a much better color. By, so by him taking the white screen and showing the ambient light hitting the screen, he's saying, look, our screen doesn't fade, it doesn't wash out. It doesn't make a difference. It's a white screen. Anything's going to be the white screen. Now, if you take a gray screen, the same color as your screen, and do that demonstration, and you can show a difference, then that's something to talk about. I don't know. Why do you have it on that just little piece right there? Why don't you just stick it right there in the center of your screen? I'm sorry, but that's sad. That is really sad. That's not even a demonstration. Look, look, look at a little bit of lighting in the background. Look at this. A little bit of lighting in the background. All the lights are sitting behind the back of the screen. The screen's blocking off the main window. Look how dark the corners are. Environment should not be that dark. I can watch their demonstration in a fully lit environment that has more light in their environment. Think about that for a minute. So you look at my environment, how bright it is, and I can watch your screen on a 720p projector. I'm guaranteed my projector has way less lumens than the projectors are using that demonstration. And that's also short throw. Are you freaking kidding me? And yet I'm watching their demonstration in a fully lit environment. My environment right now has more light than their show booth.
That's what I mean by anything today will pass as a ambient rejection screen. As long as there's just a little bit of light in the environment, it's ambient light rejection. Guarantee your living room is not that dark. Now, before y'all go all well, that you're just ridiculing these people for the sake of ridiculing them, and that's just wrong. Okay, so let's show you how we do ambient light rejections test. So, and I'm not going to go outside. I'll show you when the screens we're doing inside. Now there is my environment. Let's see real quick. Let's see the whole environment. There's a big difference between my environment and their environment on my on my projector. And in my environment compared to them being in that dark little environment. There's no short throws in this environment. Let me show you the other one. That is not ambient light rejection. I don't know where people are getting this. It's now supposed to be ambient light rejection. Outside on the deck. All right. That's the kind of light we have in our environment. This is how we do demonstrations. Not blocking out window lights, not having a screen sitting behind blocking out any windows, none of that nonsense. So in their demonstrations, every last window had a projection screen sitting behind it. And any ambient light they had in the environment was sitting behind the projection screen. They were using all ultra short though or short though projectors so that way they wouldn't have to lose too much picture quality now if you're threatened by that environment and you have to use all ultra short though that is pretty bad but as i'm showing you in this demonstration this is one of our test screens and you can see all the windows open you can see plenty of light pushing in there's nothing blocking any of the ambient light in the environment whatsoever so how come your booth doesn't look like this Let's go over to Tell me one time in their demonstration did you see any light piercing through like that? One time. That's eight hundred dollar screen, mind you. Eight hundred dollar screen that they're showing off in that demonstration. And every last window was blocked with a projection screen.
Windows are open, lights pushing through the environment. Now, you see the projector right there? That is my black Panasonic projector. That projector right there only has 1,500 lumens. So I have 1,500 lumens at 10 feet back in a fully lit environment. The windows are open, no shades, plenty of lights pushing in the environment. And that's a 1500 lumen projector using you from that test demonstration on this technology. And here they are, they're using projectors of 5,000, maybe 6,000, 4K short though projectors, and their screen is struggling in that kind of light. There's my projector right there. There's a model number of it. Look it up. That's a Panasonic projector, 1500 lumens. That's it. But let's see. Hold on for a minute. So let's go with. Hundred and eighty inch, one eighty, one eighty, one eighty, the big boys, one eighty. Space. Then some people will say, well, it's not fair because your image is smaller. And they were producing on a much bigger screen. Report crystal, let me see. Let me make sure we get this correctly. Let's go with uh, the Supreme. I think we have Supremes outside. We have Supremes outside. Because right now we're building for the new ones. Nines are going out this year. We're going to do nines. This right here is... A Supreme 8 outside on ultra short throw. Now if they're using ultra short throw projectors inside, we can do the same thing, but we do ours outside. There's no challenge to do it inside, the bigger challenge we do it outside. Hundred ninety degree viewing angle, outside on an ultra short though projector on a black screen. This is ambient light rejection. Let's go with um, let's see. There we go.
Let's see if we can find the big boy. I want to find the big one, 180 inch. That was the biggest one. I got actually, matter of fact, since we got a good day today, I got to go to Home Depot and start building my frame for my 235.1. I got to start building that thing, getting started on that, because I want to get that done as fast as possible. 180 inch. There we go. That's my 180 inch I used to have outside. Look at the hours. I got, look at, it's still evening. And I'm watching a 180 inch screen at 21 feet back. That's what I said, man. Ambient light rejection, man. It, these screens are not ambient light rejection. You should be able to do this outside with no problem whatsoever. That's not, I don't know where they come off saying it's ambient light rejection. It's not. This is a gray and white screen outside. And that's what a gray and white screen looks like outside at 4,300 lumens. And right there, this was all done live. That is our screen paint right there. Okay, so let's first things first. Let's paint this across the screen. screen outside panel demonstration because it's just not going to work. And as the screen starts to dry, it's going to get brighter and brighter. Right there on camera. You did it live. Exactly how much you're missing from the 
this. Like I said, light gray screen, white screen, this is very large. Homes like this are real good. Now keep in mind, we're designing our own inflatable screens, which means we're the only company now that has a black outdoor screen. So if all the screens out there are white and our technology comes on the scene with a black screen that can produce an image at four o'clock in the evening, do you have any idea how much money that pulls in? Every screen out there is white. We're the only technology that has it in black. So instead of you sitting there waiting until 9 and 10 o'clock to fire up your projector because you're afraid your screen's not going to show up, this technology will allow you to be able to do it. Fire up your screen at 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, with no problems. That means anyone that rents our screens would be able to rent out and have parties. People rent these screens out for parties and venues and weddings and all that stuff. You would be able to beat your competition with no problem. Your competition using a white screen, it wouldn't be to stand against a black screen outside. Because instead of them waiting, they'll have to tell their guests that they're going to have to wait until 9 or 10 o'clock because that's the best way when you can start your party off at 4 and 5 and pull an image. Can you imagine coding this stuff on outdoor drive through movie theaters. You have to wait until 8 or maybe 9 to 10 o'clock to start making your money. You can start making your money at a much earlier hour. At 6 o'clock, these screens are fully activated. So between 6, 7, 8, and 9, you make four hours of extra revenue instead of you waiting around 9 or 10 to fire up your projector. Well, that's the difference between real technology and and not only, look at it, not only does it produce contrast, but look how bright the colors are. The white screen, they do not have the ability to pull contrast. Now you see why we're getting hit with contract. I got hit with a contract a couple of days ago for an, out, out, an outdoor theater screen. Because they want to cope this stuff now on outdoor theater screens. But like I said, instead of you waiting until... 9 and 10 o'clock to start to make your money. You can start making your money at 6. You get one of our inflatable screens and you're doing parties. You're renting out those screens for parties. We had somebody actually doing that. They were renting the screens out for parties and events and making good money off of it. This was coded on an everyday all white projection screen with grummets. You can easily be at the competition. If you're doing outside events for parties and stuff like that, your competition has a white screen, you'll be able to get his business with no problem at all. Because no one's going to sit there and wait until they're going to, they have to, they have no choice. They have to wait until 9 or 10 o'clock to fire up the projector. Most people at that particular time, when you start showing movies, just really you just want to go home and get it the next day because they got work to do the next day. But, and kids, most kids are probably in bed already, unless you're doing it on a Saturday and Sunday. Kids knock out pretty early. But if you can start that party off at around 6 o'clock, that's the way to beat your competition and put more money in your pocket. Sizes of 100 inch, 120 inch, and 140 inch. And this is using our Supreme 8 technology.
Oh, that's what we do. I am the screen inside the house. <laughs> that thing was huge. I didn't think it was that big. I know that thing's not that big. I'm in the house. I think it took about half the entire living room. That was a bad idea. That was a real bad idea. Inflated the screen inside the house. This was the outdoor motorized projection screen. Okay, how are we doing out there first things first when it's kind of further and built. This screen was designed from a 58. I bought two of these. This is a $58 motorized projection screen I bought off eBay. Later on, but I'm going to show you the final results of the screen. We'll get to it. Now, for those of you that are curious where to get the motorized screen, I'll put that link at the bottom. Um, this is a 92 inch 16. That stand's gone now. I stripped it down to nothing because I'm getting ready for the inflatable next. Also oh man, I hope the weather is 51. I want to do a demonstration on the inflatable screen outside. It's actually coated on a white projection screen. Keep in mind, when you buy it, it will not be this color. The reason why it looks this way is because it's using our technology. I want to do an inflatable screen outside. really cool black sleek color to it. Hi, this? Who are you? And why are you on my phone? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I gotta get cracking. I got things to do today. Three and forty inch uh, screen outside. That's the screen with the grommets. I mean, we're gonna add outside. Bright, bright. That was outside, it right there. You can't get any bright, but we did edit. And that's the wallpaper that, screen. This is a very easy screen to uh, apply. Number seven. Now this is a pre-coated screen. It is a Supreme 8. It, it was, oh, that was an 8. That was an actual 8. I had an 8 back that far. Also, too. That was yes, an 8. I understand it. You might be in the dark. But for most of us that are using this for TV, sports, uh, kids shows, and whatever, you want to be in a well-lit environment. You don't want to be sitting in the dark 24-7 because you want a projector. And that's... That's how much light you're literally supposed to have when you're doing tests, ambient light rejection tests. Hey, how are you doing out there? First things first, my name is Kenneth Bird on the Creative Illumines 4K screen paint using ambient light rejection technology game. This is a bit of an update here. Um, we're thinking about... Oh, look at this, man. This is... I, I can't believe I inflated that in the house. That screen was gigantic. Oh, I need to get rid of it. Bees pollinate more okay, people. If they disappear. I got to get cracking. I got to get to work. So basically, just showing you. Look, we have right now uh, on the website, really quick. Uh, we got the wallpaper screens, as the ones you saw in the demonstrations. Uh, they're going for $240, which is going to be a special promotion deal. Keep in mind, it's going to be a short one. Uh, that is going to end on the 18th. Um, we have the Gamer Paint available now on the website. Uh, we have lifted, so we allow all free shipping uh, anywhere in the world. So basically, overseas shipping now is eligible back onto the website. Um, due to the fact that our contracts are going to be kicking at the end of March. And like I said, at the end of March, they're going to be converting the website over for... Um, Converting the website over for um, for contract distributors only, um, due to the fact, like I said, we don't want to we don't want to conflict with the contracts back and forth. So technology is available until then. Um, other than that, God bless. I gotta go and thank you all for your time. All right.